Hey y'all, I'm Jen from Squizito. Welcome to the Now We're Cooking Olive Oil Show. Today I'm at my house and I'm making dill mashed potatoes for you. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna be super simple. So all you need for this recipe is dill olive oil, our dill infused olive oil, and then the seasonella sea salt and as many potatoes as you want to use. So there's a good way to figure out how many potatoes you're gonna need to fill up your pan. You just put them in there first and then you'll know how many that you're gonna need. So that's an easy trick too. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already washed my potatoes, I'm just gonna cut them up, I'll have some water boiling, and then I'm gonna throw them in the pot. So let me get these potatoes cut up, and then I'm gonna tell you another trick, how I uh, figured this recipe out the other night. It was super simple and I was tired and I didn't really feel like cooking. I'm moving this camera over here so I can get a better view. So I was really tired, I didn't really feel like cooking, and I was really wanting some vegetables. I, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I crave vegetables, especially when I haven't been eating healthy. I just really crave the vegetables. So a hack, let me, I'll show you, is uh, I always keep a package of Colorado <laughs> mashed potatoes, steam in the bag mashed potatoes. They are easy to do if you need something in a hurry. But today I decided to do it the old fashioned way and show you how to do it. So I'm just chopping up these potatoes a little bit so they can go in the pan, in the pot. And I'm just gonna throw them in the pot. I'm trying not to splash myself, that was hot. Get them all in there. These are two different kinds of potatoes. I had some from Five Acre Farms. And I had some, I think, from the store, or I don't know, maybe they're two different batches of Five Acre Farms potatoes. But nonetheless, they are potatoes and they will work. You can use red potatoes, white potatoes, purple potatoes. I don't think any, I don't think any potatoes would be bad. But these are so good. So what I did the other night is a little, something a little bit different than what I'm going to do today. Okay, so I got those boiling. So what I did the other night was... I had a bag of frozen vegetables, and this is what you do when you're super tired and, you're, and you really are craving vegetables. I had a bag of frozen vegetables, and I just thawed them out, and I put them in the bottom of the pan, and I tossed them in the dill olive oil and the seasonella herbal salt. And then I steamed my mashed potatoes in the steamer bag. Like, <laughs> you know, you do what you have to do. And then uh, when they came out, I drizzled some more dill olive oil in the bag and the seasonella salt and I just smashed it up and then I put the mashed potatoes over the top of the vegetables and covered the top of the mashed potatoes with dill olive oil. And so you're gonna use quite a bit of dill olive oil on top. And then you put them in the oven at 375 degrees. I think I baked them for about uh, 20 minutes until the top just gets a little crust on it and gets a little brown and the vegetables really cook underneath. It's almost like they're, um, they're kind of frying underneath in the olive oil. So it's, it, it, and then when I got them out, they were, they were fantastic. We really enjoyed them. Still kept asking for more. And that's how I tell if it's a, a success or not. If he likes them, then it's a success. And it was a success. And so today we have smoked salmon um, and that was fantastic. Nick smoked some salmon yesterday. We actually brined it for 24 hours in salt brine the day before, and um, it was so good. So I made these mashed potatoes again last night, um, and I put the vegetables on there. And then we have, um, we smoked so many, sal two big huge planks of salmon that we have. So we invited our neighbors over today and we're gonna have the smoked salmon, and I'm making more mashed potatoes. But today I'm just gonna do the mashed potatoes by themselves and with the dill oil without the vegetables. Okay, my potatoes are still boiling and I thought of something else I wanted to make. And I went outside and I had some peppers left from my garden. So I've decided to make a fresh corn salad. So our recipe for the fresh corn salad is on the website as well. And what we used on the website was the walnut oil. And uh, well, that pepper is not gonna be very good on that side. Let's see, so I'll have to check out and see if these peppers are gonna be any good. They've been sitting on my patio since it started getting cold at night. So some of them will be good and some of them won't, but got to use what's good. So anyway, what we used on the website was walnut oil. But what I'm going to use, because um, 
I don't have any walnut oil at home. I'm going to use Persian lime oil, and that's going to be just as good. It's going to give it a bright flavor, uh, so that's going to be delicious. So if you haven't seen this recipe, I will link it, but it is on our website, and it's the fresh corn salad. I think it's fresh corn and walnut salad. So I'm just going to put some of uh, these sweet peppers in there, and I literally just got a bag of corn out of the freezer and rinsed it. That's all I did, and I put it in a bowl. And then um, just checking some of these peppers. This is a fun way to cut peppers, too. Whenever I don't want the spicy uh, seeds in there, which these aren't spicy, these are sweet, sweet peppers. Uh, but if you are chopping jalapenos and you don't want uh, the, the spicy seeds in there, this, and you don't want to have to handle them so much, this is an easy way to chop. You just long ways, put a couple of slits in it, and then chop up to the seeds and then stop and throw the rest away. I mean, if you're not going to eat the seeds anyway, then uh, sometimes it's too spicy. I grew some habanado peppers, though, this year. And no, yeah, habanados, and I grew some uh, jalapenos. And I was excited that the jalapenos weren't going to be super duper spicy, but to me, I didn't think that the jalapenos had much flavor. They not like a jalapeno. And I like spice. I don't want it to, like, hurt though so <laughs> I guess I'm kind of a wuss my husband would call me that but anyway so I'm just going to give this a little bit of color I'm doing green and yellow this is in red this is just what I had left sitting out there on the table and there's still some tomatoes and stuff which are no good because I've just let them go I try to use everything but it's hard so I'm just going to use the rest of these peppers, which is going to make me feel really good to use something. And then I'm going to put Persian lime oil and seasonella sea salt and um, some goat cheese. And that's it. The corn and the bell peppers. We need seasonella sea salt because can't live without that. And Persian lime olive oil. And this is how I do it. Just drizzle and see if it's coated well. Mix that up. I don't know if I'm going to add any nuts or not. Maybe I'll just play it by ear and see if when the guests get here, if they would prefer nuts. Maybe I'll have them on the side and let them do a sprinkle on top if they want. That's probably what I'll do. Not everybody likes nuts with corn salad. I do, but anyway, that way everybody can eat it. So this is a Simple, simple, cold corn salad. So I like a little bit more sprinkle. And then we have the goat cheese. So what I'll probably do is wait till everybody gets here before I put the goat cheese on just because I don't want it to be, to start getting like uh, milky. That's the word, milky in the bowl. And it's really pretty. So we'll just leave it like this. And then when we serve it, we'll sprinkle with goat cheese and walnuts. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm gonna check the potatoes and see if they're getting done. Just gonna poke them. Wow, they're not done yet. <laughs> so, we'll let those cook a little bit longer and then we'll have that done to put in, to mix it all up and I'll show you that in just a minute. Oh, okay, these potatoes are getting close. They're starting to fall apart. Hey, I don't know if y'all have seen uh, the other video that we did with the uh, tangy busted taters. It's the white wine chicken and the tangy busted taters video. But you kind of do the same thing. You, boil, you cut up the potatoes and you boil them until the skin start to peel back a little bit, which is about what we're going to do. And you can do on this one, uh, mashed potatoes, you can do skin on, skin off. It depends on if you like skin, if you don't like skin. I'm a skin on person, but do it how you like. Anyway, on the tangy busted taters, you just boil them until the skin starts to peel off and they get soft enough to where uh, they're a little bit softer than roasted potatoes. Anyway, then you drain them and you toss them in uh, red wine vinegar and the seasonella sea salt and garlic oil. And that's it. You just like toss them. They start to bust up into little pieces. And that red wine vinegar makes them really tangy and delicious. I wouldn't even think it would be a bad idea to add red wine vinegar to these potatoes and then put the dill oil on top. Now, I'm not gonna do that today because I don't wanna mess up this recipe <laughs> because I know this is good. I don't think it would mess it up. The red wine vinegar just gives it a little bit of a tang, 
quite a bit of a tang, but it's really good. It almost gives it like the uh, sour cream kind of flavor. So that'd be a good option for people that can't do dairy or people that choose not to do dairy to just use uh, the red wine vinegar instead. Uh, it's really good. You could use champagne vinegar, red wine vinegar, something that has a lot higher acidity than, and not sweet, of course, like balsamic vinegar. But anyway, uh, yeah, we have the red barrel aged wine vinegar and it is fantastic. I use it a lot. And here's another thing. If you haven't seen our egg video, scrambled eggs, while you're scrambling the eggs, add about a half a teaspoon of um, champagne wine vinegar or red wine vinegar. You can use lemon juice too, you need some acid. But what that does is break down the proteins enough to where whenever you're scrambling them in the pan, uh, it'll just be creamy instead of dried out. You know how sometimes when you scramble the eggs, they'll be kind of dried out. Um, anyway, it makes them fantastic. And I do it every time I cook scrambled eggs now and it's really good. So if you haven't tried that, uh, you can, you need to try that. And we have a video on that too. So it's, um, I don't remember what it's called. It's an egg video. <laughs> How to make scrambled eggs with red wine vinegar. I don't know. Anyway, so the potatoes are getting close to getting done. They are really getting soft. So that ought to be good. So what I'm going to do is turn this off. I'm going to drain the potatoes and then I'm going to put them in this pan and mash them. Woo! That's hot. I should have used a pot holder. It's okay. I'll live. Okay, so I'm going to drain off all the juice, put them in the pan, and then you know how I told you a while ago that the cheat that I used um, was the Orada steam in the bag potatoes. <laughs> so when I did that, I just, oh man, I don't want that to go down in the downdraft. I better move this over a little bit. Let me rearrange a little bit. Uh, how about I go this way? So um, I, I, I squeezed them in the bag the other day, so I haven't done this. And so you don't have any liquid in here, which is unusual whenever you're usually making mashed potatoes. You have quite a bit of, you add butter or milk or whatever. So I'm just gonna mash these and I put some seasoning on there as I'm mashing them because it's yummy. And I'm just gonna get them mixed up real good. And then after I get them mixed up real good, I'm gonna put the dill oil on top. I'm gonna take a spoon and just smooth them out and then just soak them with dill oil. And it probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and put some in there right now. And let's see, how much am I using? That was probably a couple of tablespoons. And that's how I cook. I just kind of drizzle and see the consistency. And if it's creamy enough, if it looks creamy enough, then that's good. So my measurement is how many go 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 come out of the bottle whenever you're pouring it out. So that was about six go go <laughs> And that's pretty good. So I need a spoon to smash this down. I'm gonna taste and see if it has enough uh, seasoning first. Nope, not enough, but close. Oh, those potatoes are so good. You can always, they can always salt some afterwards. I'm gonna smash them down, flatten them out like you're icing a cake. And if you've ever had shepherd's pie, this is kind of just a take on shepherd's pie, which is like the vegetables that I did the other night with the vegetables on the bottom and then the mashed pot potatoes on top. It's essentially a shepherd's pie. But when you cover the top with the dill olive oil, it makes, it will cook them in the, cook them on top. So you just cover it like this. Go, 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 go. That's about six, seven, eight, nine, ten go, go. So probably about three, four tablespoons. I'm gonna say four tablespoons of dill olive oil and that is ready to go in the oven at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes until it gets brown on top. So I'm gonna stick that in the oven. Okay, and that's gonna go for about, like I said, 20 to 25 minutes. And then 
will be ready for our company. Okay, the potatoes look like they're done. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna get a pot holder and look at them. Oh gosh, I'm gonna fog up the camera. Getting in there close to show you. But they're kind of bubbly on the side. I'll just get them and then you, you can see them out here. That'll be smarter. Okay. So you can kind of see them bubbling on the side and all the way down it's it's kind of bubbly the olive oil's worked its way all the way down and that means they're yummy so we have so we have our mashed potatoes and our corn salad and the salmon i'm fixing to just warm up my husband also smoked a, a roast today so we are ready to eat I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and if you want to try it with the vegetables on the bottom, just put the vegetables on the bottom, toss them in some dill oil, season them up with some seasonella herbal salt, and then spread the mashed potatoes down on top just like this, and then you just cook them on the oven. Let's see, I did it for 30 minutes, almost exactly 30 minutes in the oven, so on 375 degrees until they have a crust on top and they're perfectly ready to go. So they're delicious and I hope y'all enjoyed this video and y'all have a tasty week.